All right, cool. Hey guys, this is Jonathan. It's nice to see y'all again. I'm actually sick, so I apologize for my voice. But the thing that's on the the topic of today is that I'm going to be selling my my bike. This is Jasper for some of you that have watched my videos. This is a well a now a 49cc motorized bicycle. It is a hyper steel frame with a electrical system and it is fully California road legal. This is going to be a proper send off because um, Ever since I got my actual motorcycle, my Honda Shadow, I've no longer needed to ride Jasper. And so Jasper's kind of just been sitting around quite a bit, but she still starts up really nicely. I know there was a comment on my last video about this bike, about how I got the electrical system to hook up and everything, to get a whole headlight, uh, tail light with a uh, you know brake light and everything as well as um, turn signals so this video is more gonna go over that and how exactly to do that honest truth about it is that it's very rudimentary um, I'm not an electrician at all so I don't know anything about capacitors or resistors or anything like that so I just did what I could and what I kind of uh, researched pretty much it's very much backyard barn stuff but there's a there's about four topics that I want to go over first thing is the power source and how to charge it second thing is about uh, voltage regulation and what sort of system you're on third thing is the actual control cluster and the wiring harness and fourth thing is the actual physical components to the light system so let's get into it initially I wanted to have a uh, power source from the motor itself back when I was running a two-stroke engine I was wondering if I could tap into the magneto and power um, a battery pack or a battery bank from that the reason as to why I decided not to go that route of actually using the motor to uh, power the power bank was because when you tap into the motor um, because of the whole magneto system you rob a fair amount of the uh, power from the spark plug I eventually decided to just go with the power bank it's a 10 10,000 milliamp power bank and it works fairly well especially I think I could go about maybe four or five night rides without having to charge it but each ride being about one hour now recharging the power bank was one thing that crossed my mind when I was making this whole entire system and I eventually decided on trying to use a bottle dynamo this dynamo is definitely not efficient um, it has a lot of friction loss over time but it does charge definitely would be best to view this more as a backup a passive a recharge as opposed to a dedicated recharge. I think if I remember correctly it took me maybe about um, what six minutes of riding continuous riding with uh, the wheel spinning to get about maybe one or two percentages onto the actual power bank. This leads me to the second point that I was talking about when it comes to voltages and regulation and what kind of system you want to run power banks run on a 5 volt system so these power up 5 volt now this model dynamo only puts out 12 voltages of uh, electricity not only that but it only puts out AC current you have to run your system with a compatible type of current as well as voltage rating now uh, if you ha find this sort of situation where I have a charge system that is running off of a 12 volt and AC current um, output you will have to convert it to work with a power bank which runs off of a 5 voltage system 
and a and a direct current. So in order to do that, you have to hook yourself up to a buck converter. So now that we talked about the power source that you want to decide, as well as any sort of recharging capabilities that you want to do, let's go ahead and talk about the control cluster. This is the control cluster that I bought off of Amazon. I believe it's originally for a uh, e-bike setup. On the Amazon page you will find that it is rated for 12 volts. So the question is, hey Jonathan, I thought you said that you know you have to run off of the same voltages and everything like that. Well, here's the trick. These control clusters are only wires and cables as well as small little switches. So you can run a 5 volt power source into this 12 volt system. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in to give it some power. There we go. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. So as you can see, the lights do work. They do turn on. But, like I said before, since we do have a 5 volt power bank going into a 12 volt rated item, these lights are actually not as bright as they should be. But, since it's only wires and, and little switches, for the purposes of running a whole entire uh, electrical system, it still works. Especially because the items that I have them hooked up to, which are these last four components, these four components, the two tail lights, the um, back rear light, as well as this headlight, these are all 5 volt items. So to continue on with the control cluster slash wiring harness topic, this item from Amazon comes with a whole splice of cables that will hook up to all the different components that you want. So first thing, wired it all the way over. This is where I've spliced in. If uh, you can, and this is where a lot of the learning curve comes from, I learned how to solder wire, which it might be part of the learning process that you want to embark on with this whole entire uh, system. Because like I said, it's definitely not perfect, but if you want to learn basic wiring principles, this is wonderful. So this is the headlight. The thing about this light is that it comes with a 12 volt bulb and it will work, but it will not be as bright as intended. So what I did is I basically took apart this housing and I fixed a 5 volt LED system that I got as a USB powered light bulb. As you can open it up and see, it's all just wired through this cable which goes to the light cable. And if you are confused about what kind of which wire to go to which, there is a diagram on the Amazon page for this control cluster that diagrams which wires control which. So I basically just took this apart and I screwed in the actual light bulb um, LED onto there. And it works. Another thing that you should know when you're trying to do this whole entire project is that you will need to make brackets or any sort of things to help with mounting items. This headlight construction did come with something that bolts into the bike and I was able to run it, but it eventually cracked because of the vibration. So I went to uh, Home Depot or uh, I, I think it was some other hardware store to buy this aluminum plate that I pretty much just drilled and fabricated. So let's talk about the turn signals. Now the thing that's nice about a 5 volt system is that if you have those little USB lights, anything that's USB powered will work with this power bank. And you can take those wires and those cables um, from those systems and hook them directly into this and it will be powered. So these little lights, um, which I bought the housing and then affixed, 
with some LED strips so as you can see it's actually just LED an LED strip it's very bright and it works for what I need it for I went ahead and bought these which normally are supposed to be hooked up to an LED strip so the really nifty thing about it is that you can set your turn signals to blink as fast or as slow as you want them to which is really nice as a last component I wanted to have a brake light as well as tail light basically combo the tail light is very simple to hook up it was as straightforward as the uh, headlight is you just splice the you just splice the wires together and there you go you have power whenever you push the button however the brake light is what adds a little wrench into the whole entire system because you have to hook it up in a way where you have to set up a switch to tell the light to in there to turn on whenever you touch the brake i also fabricated this bracket that holds it in it's very backyard stuff, I know, for sure. So onto the brake light lever and the uh, brake light uh, sensor or switch, as you can see. So this, this little device right here is actually a brake light switch for a rear brake on a motorcycle. What I've basically done is I've taken the spring that it comes with and I have looped it through the brake lever to where it is on the actual brake lever itself and this pulls on the switch and activates it so just to demonstrate as you can see it's actually pulling the little rod in there which is activating the brake which is uh, doing the whole contacts and turning the brake light on now again the thing that's nice about this whole entire system is that it is fully customizable and it depends on you in order to decide on what sort of voltage system you want and what sort of components you want to do. Again, this system that I've fixed up is very much rudimentary and it can definitely be done way better and I know that it could. The thing is I wanted to do this because I saw it more as a learning opportunity. I know if you were to order all this stuff, it's a little expensive, but if you can source the parts or find um, some different kinds of housings here and there for cheaper, uh, it would definitely be a little bit inexpensive. But as for me, I'm going to go ahead and sell Jasper here because I no longer ride her enough. Come on, Chica. Come on, you, you always got to you always got to be licking my hands when I'm making this stuff, these things. Can't say no to that face. I'm going to be posting this bike onto Craigslist and just selling it locally. Hopefully, whoever ends up buying this bike will take good care of it. Better care than I have, for sure. Especially because this bike has been sitting around for a couple months now. But as for you guys, if you have any questions at all about um, electricity or the voltages and all that sort of stuff, or any more about the components and how to wire them you're very much welcome to put them down in the comments I know that this is definitely a learning process and it was for me for sure I hope you guys have a wonderful day and God bless all of you bye bye